Welcome to the Wind River 2 introductory training course. My name is Dan Murphy and I work in the field service department at Teradyne Audi Instruments where I respond to customer emails and phone calls regarding Teradyne Audi Instruments products. I have been with the company for 10 years. Let us look at the big picture. Wind River 2 is TRDI software that is used to collect data from an ADCP, display it and produce a report. It can collect from any one of our ADCPs. What we're showing here in the top left hand corner of the screen is a river ray. This is the latest ADCP from Teradyne Audio Instruments and can measure water up to 60 meters deep. Next down is a stream pro. The stream pro is used in shallow water up to 6 meters deep. Both of these instruments are using a Bluetooth connection as the mechanism to transfer the data in real time to the laptop that is running Wind River 2. This same connection allows Wind River 2 to configure and control the ADCP as well as to collect the data. Next down is a Rio Grande. The Rio Grande uses a cable connection to the laptop. Instead of using this cable, some people have added a set of radios that allow for greater distances and more flexibility than using a cable. In recent times some people have used a Bluetooth connection instead of the radios. Although the Bluetooth connection is less expensive it also has less range than the radios. Further down on the left side is a GPS. The GPS provides a means to map your track across the river and can also be used should there be a moving bed condition. The GPS can be connected directly to Wind River 2 as shown in the diagram. In the case of the Stream Pro or River Ray, we will cover these connections in a later slide. A depth sounder is an option that can be used in situations where there are high sediment concentration levels or the bottom is soft. As of fall 2013, the River Ray will have a vertical beam that can be used in lieu of the depth sounder. In the top middle, we show that Wind River 2 has displays. In fact, it has a wide variety of displays. There are profile displays and contour and tabular displays. On the top right, we show the concept of a measurement file. Wind River 2 has the notion of all the data, including the configuration, test results, compass calibration and reports are all saved in a measurement. The benefit of this measurement approach is that afterwards you can go back at any time and look at any and all aspects of the measurement. Next we have the supported files. These include an XML style output, an easily customizable ASCII output, GPS data and others. Last of all there are the four or more data files. These contain the actual transects. The physical measurement consists of four actual transects across the river. Finally, we have the reason for the transects, and that is the Q measurement summary report, which we will see in a bit more detail on the next slide. There are several different aspects to this report. Some contain information that was inputted by the operator, such as physical location, who collected the data, etc. Other portions contain information that was interrogated from the ADCP, such as ADCP type, frequency, and serial number. Finally, on the bottom are the discharge values for each of the individual transects, including the mean of the transects. The river discharge is in cubic meters per second, or it can also be displayed and reported in cubic feet per second. On this slide, we are showing two Bluetooth connections. The one on the bottom is for the ADCP ensemble data, and the one on the top is for the GPS data. A separate Bluetooth connection is needed for the GPS data to ensure that there is no latency in the GPS data. A SENA SD1000U has been found to work well for the GPS connection. For the ensemble data connection, any Bluetooth device with ample range will work. 
In the case of the river ray, the GPS is connected directly into the river ray via the black cable shown in the picture. That is the cable from the GPS on the top going down to into the river ray. Then within the river ray, the GPS messages are incorporated into the PD0 ensemble data and they are sent over a single Bluetooth connection to the laptop. Direct support of the Stream Pro. Using a Bluetooth connection on your laptop enables WinRiver 2 to collect data from the Stream Pro. The benefit of doing this is that you have a much larger screen with more comprehensive graphical displays to look at during your data collection time. With WinRiver 2 you can open Stream Pro data files directly within WinRiver 2. Essentially, WinRiver 2 will take the configuration files, the data files, and import the data into a newly created measurement file. There is no need to use the program called INI2XML that we had some years ago. WinRiver 2 allows you to view and scroll through the entire data set. Lastly, on this slide is the ability within WinRiver 2 to have a terminal session going that will allow you to interact directly with the ADCP instead of having to use BBTalk. However, BBTalk is more comprehensive. Should you happen to be using BBTalk, you will have to shut it down in order to allow you to communicate with Runiver 2. Earlier I mentioned that you can see the entire data set on the screen at one time. One of the benefits of this is that you can zoom into a portion of the data that is of interest to you, or you can scroll backwards or forwards to the data. In addition, there are more graphs than there were available on WinRiver 1. One of the capabilities that seems to have been of great interest is the ability to output virtually any data from the raw data file, such as velocities, depths, GPS data, etc. The measurement file management works just like in Microsoft, in that you can click on the plus symbol to drill down in the tree structure. In addition, it handles all the pertinent data files transparently that are part of a complete measurement. Finally, WinRiver 2 supports the hydrologic markup language that allows data to be exported in an XML format. The configuration wizard has been expanded to include Stream Pro and direct access to mode 12 for the advanced user. In addition, it displays the instrument frequency and serial number. There are built-in tests for the river ray the Rio Grande and the Stream Pro. There is a moving bed test and loop test capability and we will cover these abilities uh, in the next presentation. Later I will show you how the tutorials that will allow you to learn or review any particular level of the program are available to you on the web. This screen is the de facto home screen. You may change any and all of the panels as desired. We will elaborate on these panels later. On the next slide we will zoom in on the earth velocity magnitude contour which is the bottom large panel on this page. This is the velocity contour plot all by itself. It shows a cross section of the river where a transect has been taken. The solid black line represents the bottom of the river. Above it, the skinnier black line represents the side lobe cutoff area. Arrow number one is the measured area. You want this to be as big as possible. Arrow number two is the unmeasured top area. 
you want this to be as small as possible. Reducing the ADCP draft will help, but you don't want to reduce it so much that the ADCP is out of the water at any time. Arrow number three is the unmeasured area near the bottom. This is the side lobe contamination area. There are two arrows number four on the left and right extremities. These are the unmeasured estimated edge areas. You want these to be as small as possible while still maintaining a minimum of two good bends at each of those two locations. We will explain this in more detail in another presentation. An ensemble is a complete standalone single measurement. They generally occur at the rate of about a couple per second or faster. On the bottom of the screen you can see the ensemble numbers from 1729 on the right hand side to 2462 on the left hand side. The slider in the middle between arrows number 1 and 2 is covering a single ensemble which has measured velocities that are basically green in the neighborhood. Based on the scale of the velocities they are in the 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 meters per second range. The little boxes with different colors are the individual bins within an ensemble. There are many bins per ensemble and each is a separate independent velocity and direction measurement. TRDI interchangeably uses the words bins and depth cells. They both always have the same meaning. Looking down the river, the left bank will be on your left hand side and the right bank will be on your right hand side. A transect can begin at either bank and end at the other bank. Usually four complete transects are done. Because the water is shallow at the edges, it is necessary to move from the edges some distance and mark this location as the start of the transect. On the other bank the same principle applies. To determine these points, two good bins are required. This information will be covered in more detail in a subsequent presentation. These tutorials are downloadable from the documentation portion in the support section of the website. The first one is an overview, the second one is the measurement wizard, the next is the QA QC, next is the transect stop points, next is the configuration settings followed by the collection of data and finally post-processing of the data. Some upcoming courses we will pres be presenting the following courses in the coming months. The first one is Connect Your River Ray, Stream Pro or Workhorse Rio Grande to Wind River 2. This course will cover connecting each ADCP type to Wind River 2. The focus will be on communications, Bluetooth and serial. Also included are troubleshooting techniques. The next course is Connect Your GPS or Depth Sounder to Wind River 2. This course will cover connecting a GPS via Bluetooth or serial connection. Also included is a depth sounder connection. And finally, data collection in Wind River 2. This course will cover collecting ACP, GPS and depth sounder data. The focus will be on the ACP as previous courses will have covered the GPS and depth sounder. Wind River 2 ASCII out. This course will cover selecting items of interest and outputting the data in an ASCII format to a file. Compass Calibration. This course will cover using Wind River 2 to calibrate a Stream Pro, River Ray or Workhorse. The focus will be on the new ISM compass that is used in the Stream Pro and River Ray. Next up is Data Quality. This course will cover intensities, correlations, air velocities and compass calibration results. Finally on this page, the moving bed test. This course will cover usage of the moving bed test portion of Wind River 2. This will include the stationary moving bed test and the loop method. 
This last course is going to show you Wind River 2 running on your tablet. At the moment, as of September 2013, we use an Acer W5 tablet and we use the internal Bluetooth connection to connect to a Riveray or Stream Pro. This particular tablet has a range of approximately 100 meters. Other models may vary. Thank you.